as an avid DMZ player, this is one of the worst things I can see. No insured weapons available. Sure, I have plenty of contraband to use, but for some odd reason, I feel like I need to keep my contraband for later. I don't know why, but when my contraband gets under 50, I start freaking out. I know, psycho, right? Well, sooner or later, we all find ourselves on a losing streak, and before you know it, we've lost all of our insured weapons. I finished all of my passive missions, so my wait times are cut in half from what they were originally, meaning they're only 30. 60 and 90 minutes, but that can still feel like an eternity. I wanted to find a way to be able to play with any gun I want, but not have to stress about not having a 15 minute version. One of the guys I play with named Killer Clown put me on how he does it, which led me to finding other ways as well. In this video, I'm going to share with you three of the fastest ways I know of to get your insured weapons back, with the pros and cons of each. All three methods do involve loading into another raid. So the first way to get your insured weapons back is to load into the raid with money and dead drop it. I'm not completely sure how the dollar amounts correlate to what the amount of time is, but I think it equals about $1,000 per minute of time left. For me, $100,000 gets all three of my weapons back immediately. Also note, the times do not add up, so my 30, 60, and 90 minutes do not equal 180, which would then theoretically be $180,000. The dollar amount is applied to all slots equally. Using this method means it doesn't matter if you exfil or die because all three of your weapons will be waiting for you when you get back to the lobby. The next way is to load into another raid, but instead of dropping cash, loot for self revives and dead drop them instead. Each selfie is worth 20,000, so in my case, I can drop five selfies during a game and all my insured weapons will be back. The pro of this method is it doesn't cost you anything out of your wallet and you can get looted back, back up during the game. The negative is if you die during the game before you drop them all, then you have to do another raid to continue. You don't lose the credit you already deposited, you just don't hit the goal you set. You can also drop a combination of selfies with cash, and again, you're trying to hit a dollar amount, so it doesn't matter what combination you use. The last way I'm going to describe is the way I do it. I load into the raid with $100,000, but instead of dead dropping it, I get to the exfil as fast as possible in exfil. The cash I have on me when I exfil counts the same as dead dropping it. The benefit of doing it this way is I get all my insured weapons back right away, and it doesn't cost me anything since I brought the money out. The con of this, though, is the risk. There are still a lot of exfil campers, and in Ashika, you can get to the exfils quickly, but so can everyone else on the map. So as soon as you call it in, be aware you might have to fight for your survival just to get out. I've done this about 10 times now, and I've only not made it out one time. There was a team exfil camping, and I wasn't prepared for that type of fight. There was also one time right after I spawned in, somebody pulled a hunt contract on me. Luckily, I was on the exfil bird taking off right before they drove up. As far as as what type of character you should use to do it, there are different ways to look at it. When I started doing it, I was using my wiped character, so if I died, I didn't lose anything else trying to get out. The negative of that is as soon as people start using their UAVs 30 seconds into the game, you're easily seen and can be pushed very quickly. This makes it very tough on Ashika because the map is so small. Now, I use a three-plated stealth character so I don't show up on the UAVs. This limits my risk to just the time it takes for the exfil chopper to get in and land. At least I have the fast exfil, so that's huge, especially doing it this way. If you guys know of any other ways to get your insured weapons back I haven't mentioned in the video, please leave a comment comment below and tell me about it.